Good afternoon, everybody. It's Miss Morgan with the Williston Community Library bringing you today's week two of the summer reading program. So today what you're going to need is you are going to need your watercolors. Oops, mine just went all over the place. You're going to need your watercolors, um, a cup of water, and then a straw. So if you picked up your... Um, if you picked up your kits from us, everything is included, and then a piece of paper. So what we're going to do is we are going to make some coral reefs. So we're gonna take our water, and we're gonna get our paint really wet here. Give me one second to move you down so you can see. All right, so we're gonna take our paints, and I think I'm gonna use pink, and you wanna get them with a lot of water here to make this work because we're going to make coral reef blow paintings so you're going to want to get these super wet and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit here I'm going to get it a little more wet I'm going to put a little bit here maybe even add some water to the paper. Then you're going to take your straw and you're going to go and blow in your straw. Just like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change colors. I'm going to use blue now. I think I'm going to just go ahead and add a little bit of water straight to my palette just like that then you're going to do the same thing And you're just going to keep going until you have what you want your coral reef to look like. All right, so I think this is gonna be my coral reef. And you can go ahead and you can draw like a sandy bottom. You can draw rocks or paint rocks, I mean. You can do all sorts of different things with your painting here. All right, and since we finished our activity, what we're going to do is we are going to read a story called Coral Reefs, and this is by Sylvia Earle, illustrated by Bonnie Matthews.
How would you like to visit the underwater world of the coral reef? In warm, clear oceans around the world, coral reefs circle our earth like a belt of beautiful jewels. Coral reefs are rainbow, are like rainbow colored cities. Even the buildings are alive. Day and night, many creatures are out swimming around. Others peek from cracks and holes. Humans can't breathe underwater like a fish can, but you can still visit coral reefs, strap on a face mask, snorkel and flippers, and come along. Corals belong to a group of animals that have soft, jelly-like bodies. They have a slippery arms with tiny stinging cells. Jellyfish, anemones, and sea fans are among their many relatives. The reef buildings are made from skeletons of many tiny animals called, called coral polyps. Each little coral animal looks like a flower growing from a stony pot. It is no wonder people once thought they were plants. Hundreds, sometimes thousands of small anim coral animals lock together in a fantastic shapes. Some form branches like the horns of a deer, an elk, or a moose. Some make huge, huge mounds that look like giant brains. Others grow in the shape of mushrooms. And there's the sea fan, the anemone, and jellyfish. Coral reefs grow in shallow, clear, warm water. Once a year, a few days after the last full moon of summer, reef corals release their eggs into the sea. The eggs grow into larvae, baby corals then that drift for several weeks. Young corals need a rocky bottom or other hard surface to grow on. Sometimes they settle on shipwrecks. They can grow into beautiful shapes that make their wrecks look like coral castles. For reef building corals to grow, the temperature has to be just right, not too hot, not too cold. There must also be just the right amount of salt in the water, not too much, not too little. And reef corals need sunlight to grow. Hundreds of tiny plant shaped like, plants shaped like jelly beans live inside each soft coral animal. They make the corals colorful, green, blue, gold, pink, or sometimes even a pale purple. When everything is just right, reef building corals build hard skeletons around their soft bodies. The corals divide many times and lock together to form reefs. These are the buildings in the underwater city. There's elkhorn coral, sea squirts, brain coral, fan coral. And these are close-ups of the corals. So who lives in this underwater city? Millions of creatures. Some are short, round, and hollow. Others are long and slim. A few look like stars or pin cushions. Many are very small. There are sponges, animals that have no arms or legs or eyes, to eat, they pump water through dozens of tiny holes in their bodies and strain out small plants and animals. There are mollusks, mollusks, animals with soft bodies and no backbone. Some, such as clams and snails, live in hard shells. Others, the octopuses and squids, move fast by squirting water out of their bodies. It is a special kind of jet propel pro propulsion. I wanted to say propeller. There are also sea stars, sea cucumbers, serpent stars, and sand dollars, the spiny skinned animals. They move using their hundreds of feet with suckers on the end. Some reef animals are soft on the inside but have their skeleton on the outside. Look at crabs, lobsters, and shrimp. Each leg, each long antenna, even each eye is covered in a stiff outer shell. As they grow, they split out of their old shells. Then new shells are formed. Then new shells form. It's like they're changing into larger clothes. Many types of worms live on the reef too, but
but they're not like the earthworms you know. Some are bright and fancy, such as a Christmas tree worm. Others are very small and hide deep within the corals. And this is the Christmas tree worm. And of course, there are fish. All fish have a backbone, beautiful eyes, a heart, and a brain. About one quarter of all kinds of fish known in the sea live around coral reefs. There are parrotfish, as bright as tropical birds, with a mouth that looks like a parrot's beak, bright yellow silver, and the black butterfly fish dance about, usually in pairs, sometimes in groups called schools. There are angelfish, as gentle as kittens, grouper, as playful as puppies, damselfish, damselfish that move like dancers, and hundreds of others. Many reef, drill, reef dwellers find food in nearby meadows of seagrasses. Some eat tiny creatures that float over the reef. And there are big toothy barracuda, sleek sharks, large snappers, and moray eels. They are the predators. They eat fish or squid or other creatures who eat smaller fish, who eat seaweed or shrimp or other animals. It is all part of what makes the underwater city live and grow. Just as cities have tourists, reef has special visitors. Sometimes sea turtles glide by or pause for an underwater nap. Hawksbill turtles come to munch on their favorite reef sponges. Green sea turtles come to snack on sea grasses. Big loggerhead turtles may stop to search for jellyfish for lunch. Like turtles, dolphins may visit, then slip away to the open sea. Some fish make their own beds at night. Parrotfish spin a special jelly-like sleeping bag around themselves. Certain triggerfish sleep on their sides, covering up with a light dusting of sand. Garden eels disappear into their burrows. But coral reefs, like other great cities, never sleep. At night, many creatures come out of their hiding places. Bright red squirrel fish swim out of small caves. Basket starfish, curled up by day, spread their arms wide at night to feed. Swimming over the, a reef at night, you may find yourself covered in sparkling lights. Thousands of small swimming creatures light up the sea. Tiny shrimp produce brilliant puffs of light Jellyfish glow. Some coral reefs are much larger, larger than our biggest cities. The Great Barrier Reef in Australia stretches for 1,250 miles. Some reefs grow like lacy fringes along many miles of shore. Others, called, called atolls, grow in a ring around large lagoons. Reefs make up only a small part of the ocean, but they are as important to the sea as rainforests are to land. They protect the shore from storms. Some of the reefs sponges, corals, and seaweeds are used to make medicines. But most important to us, coral reefs help keep the oceans healthy. For millions of years, long before people built cities, coral reefs have been living in the clear, warm waters of the world. But today, many reefs are sick. Some are dying. To help protect coral reefs, people are trying to stop pollution from damaging them. Parks are being formed underwater. People are, stu people are studying reefs to find out what other things they can do that can be done to save them. With knowing comes caring. With caring, people can help restore coral reefs to good health. That's good for corals, good for the sponges, good for the fish, and good for the people too. Please come and visit a coral reef again soon. The end. All right, everybody. So that is going to conclude week two of the summer reading program. Thank you so much for joining me, and we'll see you next time.